And that algorithmic approach means there's no musical chairs, there's no third party that can introduce inflation, and it also stops bubbles. But there's a really important thing I'd love to ask Alan, and a way to tee it up is actually a quote from Machiavelli in The Prince on innovation. He says, there is nothing more difficult to take in hand, more perilous to conduct, or more uncertain in its success than to take the lead in the introduction of a new order of things, because the innovator has for its enemies all those who have done well under the old conditions and lukewarm defenders in those who may do well under the new. And it reminded me of exactly what's happening in the world of blockchain and digital currencies, because the enemies of this new order of things are the banks and the third parties, because They have to be because they have so much to lose. They have everything to lose. So how do digital currency startups and how does this nascent industry deal with those enemies of the new order? I believe that challenge will continue because digital currency with its underpinning blockchain technology, as I said, is going to allow us for the first time to do a lot of things without the participation or control of the central authority. It is going to be very disruptive in that it will allow us to do a lot of things that our government were used to in controlling us. It would also be very disruptive, especially to the financial services industry the credit card, the banks, the debit cards, and so on. And there will be a lot of pushback. And we have seen it all. We have, well, we haven't seen it all. We have seen a lot of that. Like people like J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, CEO, who call Bitcoin a fraud. No, it's not a fraud. It's something that is fearful, that's going to be very disruptive to their banking and financial system, which they were able to extract a lot of fees, a lot of those are definitely legitimate. But on the other hand, it's because we don't have another choice. When there's no option or choices, we basically have to live with it, whether we have to pay a very, very high fees or credit card charges, finance charges, like uh, credit card interest of up to, what, 29%? That is almost outrageous. What what is going to happen is because there is going to be a choice that people no longer have to use most of the financial services that that we are accustomed to from the banking system, of course, they wouldn't like it. Of course, they would push back. But I believe that the best way to do it is like what DNOT has been doing, is to do it very slowly, rather than jumping into it and make a lot of claim, but cannot deliver. Quite frankly, if you look at our industry right now as a whole, it is it is almost ironic that whatever we try to do to be better than the current banking system, we actually are doing worse. We have a lot more problem. We charge people a lot more. We try to make money very, very quickly, but that's limited to a small group of people. And more people are being hurt today by our industry then the banking and financial system we claim that we can replace with a better solution 